and the tightening of the safe management measures. We have not ruled out the possibility of a circuit breaker. Going back to phase two. This is not a circuit breaker. I'm sure I'm not the only one that's worried about circuit breaker two, especially after the re phase two heightened alert. To try and assuage my fears and yours, I decided to take a trip down memory lane and relook at the factors that led to circuit breaker one year ago. Spoiler alert, things were very different last year. Let's start with Feb 7 when Singapore announced Dorscon Orange. Just the day before, Singapore had only 30 confirmed cases, with only one case unlinked. On February 8, Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong held a press conference and said, We're not locking down the city or confining everybody to stay at home. On February 12, two new clusters were announced, bringing the total number of clusters to five. On February 17, the 14-day stay-home notice was announced. This was stricter than the leave of absence, as people who leave their homes could now face penalty. And as we enter March, the daily new infections go from single digits to double digits. On March 12, WHO declared COVID-19 a global pandemic is not a word to use lightly or carelessly. On the same day, Singapore confirmed only 9 new cases, bringing the total number of cases in the country to 187. At this point, there were 9 cases on hand that were unlinked. But on March 13, Singapore announced the first major iterations of the safe management measures. These include the cancellation of events over 250 participants. Firms were also encouraged to implement telecommuting or video conferencing where possible. On March 18, the 14-day SHN was implemented for all travellers, foreshadowing the impending return of Singaporeans living abroad. On the same day, there was a sudden increase in the number of daily new cases. Of the 47 new cases, 33 were imported. Five of the new cases were unlinked, bringing the total number of unlinked cases on hand to 17. There were also at least 27 potential clusters at this point. On March 21st, Singapore saw its first two COVID-19 deaths. On March 23rd, there were 54 new cases, 48 of which were imported. The remaining six new cases were unlinked, bringing the total unlinked cases on hand to 31. The next day on March 24th, more safe management measures were announced. All night sports and entertainment venues were shut down, gatherings were restricted to less than 10 people, and firms were required by law to implement telecommuting. Singapore residents and long-term pass holders are also deterred from travelling, as from March 27th, they will have to pay for their own hospitalisation bills. Imported cases began to taper, but unlinked locally transmitted cases started to rise. Between the last week of March and the first week of April, New daily unlinked cases went from single digits to double digits. On March 30th, the S11 at Pongo Dormitory was identified as a cluster. And on April 1st, another cluster was identified at Lee Amoy Old Age Home. On April 1st, there were 74 new cases. Of these new cases alone, 25 of them were unlinked, making the total number of cases that are still unlinked 115. On this day, 11 of the cases were found to be linked to Lee Amoy Old Age Home, and another 10 linked to the S11 dormitory at Pongo. This will be the start of the massive outbreak in the dormitory. Today, dorm cases account for at least 89% of total confirmed COVID-19 cases in Singapore. On April 3rd, the circuit breaker was announced, just as the total number of cases passed the 1K mark the day before. There were 65 new cases of COVID-19, 16 of which were unlinked, bringing the total number of unlinked cases to 127. Back to where we are today. On May 14, Lawrence Wong announced that we are going into heightened alert. Some of the new measures announced include restricting social gatherings to two, disallowing dining at F&B venues, and returning to work from home as a default. Hey, wait, isn't this basically CB already? Eh, hey, still need to part the video now, huh? I spent so much for what? Oh, okay, 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 okay. my boss telling me that this isn't CB. And if it's a CB, we will say it is a CB. And with good reason. Just look at the difference in terms of measures. This is what Lawrence Wong had to say last year when he was asked if there was a trigger point for Singapore to implement a lockdown. We like to see these measures as a series of breaks uh, which you can put in place. We have a set of baseline measures which will continue for sustained periods. That's baseline. And then we apply extra breaks on top of the baseline. And as I keep repeating or keep emphasizing, there is no magic two-week solution to this, right? These breaks have to be applied for a sustained period. If the situation improves, we remove some breaks. But don't panic. There's no point speculating about whether the CB will really come. And there's no need to rush out to buy toilet paper, all right? For now, all we can do is just be socially responsible and take safe management measures seriously.